My name is Ian Wells. I'm the team lead for the NASA Big Idea Challenge team at Washington State University. NASA has identified lunar dust as one of the greatest barriers to future moon exploration, including on the upcoming Artemis missions. The dust is ubiquitous, abrasive, and electrically charged, making it a very difficult substance to deal with. The dust threatens both astronaut health and equipment integrity. The goal of this challenge has been mitigating those negative effects, and specifically, in our case, removing lunar dust in a lunar airlock. Our solution uses a liquid nitrogen or liquid air spray to remove substantial amounts of lunar dust while also pressurizing an airlock. This is in part due to the Leidenfrost effect. The Leidenfrost effect is when a liquid is far enough above its boiling point that it actually forms droplets insulated by its own evaporating gas. In our case, these droplets pick up and transport dust from a surface to the lowest point in a lunar airlock. This video is intended to serve as a technology verification demonstration, showing our method and our process. We first discovered liquid nitrogen's use as a cleaning agent by happenstance, when we used it to clean the floor after a liquid cryogen demonstration. We noticed the nitrogen droplets moving dust from high to low points, and immediately realized that this could be useful for NASA. We tested our concept by pouring nitrogen over a surface and verifying the observed effect, raising our technology readiness level from two to three. Our first challenge was finding a proper lunar dust simulant. Since we're in the Pacific Northwest, we used ash from Mount St. Helens, which has been preserved by Washington State University since the eruption. This ash is very similar to lunar dust due to its particle size distribution, presence of agglutinates, and composition. Next, we searched for a spacesuit material. After looking through many orthofabric options, we settled on a Kevlar Nomex weave. This is very similar to spacesuit material as verified by microscopy. We began by cutting a section of the Kevlar weave and massing it. We then applied our lunar dust simulant, removed excess, and massed it again to determine the mass of adhered dust particles. For TRL3 liquid nitrogen application, we chose a simple handheld cryotherapy bottle sprayer. After clipping the Kevlar sheet to a board, we removed the dust with a liquid nitrogen spray. After treatment, we masked the Kevlar sheet again to determine the mass of removed dust. This test resulted in over 95% dust removal, giving us the confidence to move to our next test in a vacuum chamber. For the first vacuum test, the liquid nitrogen application method was a single spray nozzle on the inside of the vacuum chamber. For our sample, we used another small portion of dust-treated Kevlar Nomex weave. This vacuum test showed similar dust removal to our localized test, with over 98% of the dust mass being removed. These results bring our technology readiness level from 3 to 4. For our final test, we created a 1 6th scale astronaut suit with the Kevlar Nomex weave. For this test, the liquid nitrogen application method was a spray bar with four nozzles which closely represents our proposed airlock system. During testing, the 1 6 scale astronaut was rotated in place to simulate 360 degree spray coverage. After cleaning in the vacuum chamber, the suit also received spot treatment. Our final test again showed a high degree of dust removal with minimal residual particles found upon post-test inspection. This test raises our technology readiness level from four to five. We set a target removal at 90% of particles less than 10 microns. Our quantitative results meet or exceed this target and our qualitative results support these findings. As liquid cryogens are certain to be stored in a lunar habitat, 
the team sees no barriers to future use and therefore presents this concept as a viable solution to the NASA Big Idea Lunar Dust Mitigation Challenge. Further development would focus on improvement of spray nozzles and a larger scale system for testing in reduced gravity. On behalf of the entire Hyperlab team, I'd like to thank NASA for allowing our participation in this challenge. We've learned a great deal in the process and we are endlessly grateful to be a part of the Artemis generation, putting humans back on the moon to stay.